For tape, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is a Friday morning service of the Memorial Day Camp Meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Jack Duran is a speaker for the morning. Jack Duran's going to come and minister the word of the Lord this morning. Uh, we've known him for several years, been in his church quite a few times, and uh, he has a, started to work in a home, in a, just in a home, wasn't it? A prayer group and storefront, and the Lord's given him a you, First time we went there, they had just moved into a mortuary, and it still was the mortuary. And a uh, little place set off on the side with the rail in front of it for the family and all. That's the part we had that where we sat that night. They've taken that place and made a beautiful, beautiful facility. The Lord has blessed, blessed, blessed. And it's beautiful. And they have a, they have two or three hundred in the congregation. And, and they're building a, or taking over another facility a little ways away to have a mission. And the Lord's really blessing out there. And the anointing is in, is in the, that building. And they, they, drove, they drove out death and brought life in. And they, it's called New Joy Fellowship. And the joy of the Lord is there. The Lord bless you, Brother Jack. That Bill Goodson, he, he made me perspire this morning. I, he came in with a turtle neck sweater, and I said, oh, God. Trying to get used to the time. My time is only about 7 o'clock in the morning. But I praise God. Where's this brother? Give me an escort. Don't that sound like I know what I'm doing? <laughs> Praise God. I don't know about you, but I came expecting God to do some good things this morning. And I come expecting God because I believe God sent us here for a purpose. And this morning I trust that I can encourage you, stir up the gift that is in you to believe God for what he says he is and what he'll do. Amen. And we're going to have a good time. I want you to stand with me. Brother Merle, I have a word for you, brother. The anointing of God is going to multiply, and the hunger and the love that God has given you for the Latin people is not coming out of yourself, brother, but out of God. For even sometimes the Latin people won't go. But God has ordained you to go forth, and you will see greater things and greater miracles. And the anointing of God will increase. The presence of God has already gone before you. And God says, do not turn back. Do not look to those things that look pleasing to your eye for satisfying the flesh. But my God will meet every need according to his riches and glory. Do not fear those things that are ahead of you, not even the governments of the countries, for my God will make a way and he will give you favor. He will tear down strongholds and he will destroy the work of the evil. When you speak the word, it will be the word of the Lord and it will do what it says it will do. And you shall see the glory and the fulfillment of the word right before your eyes. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm getting an echo, brother. That's what we ought to do. We ought to echo the Word of God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Give me an F chord, brother. Let's sing that chorus. <clears throat> oh, Lord, you're wonderful in counsel. You're wonderful. Excellent in working. Excellent in working. You are excellent. Mighty to deliver. Mighty to deliver. You are mighty. Glory be to God. Glory be to God forevermore. Let's sing it again. Oh, Lord, to wonderful in counsel. You're wonderful. Excellent in working. You are excellent, mighty to deliver, you are mighty, yes you are Lord, glory be to God forevermore. 
Before I get into the message, I want you to do something this morning. I used to get frustrated because I've been to many camp meetings. And one of the things that really upsets me, <laughs> that God's had to deal with me, is sometimes you come to a camp, camp meeting expecting joy and love and fellowship. And sometimes you get the brothers that walk by you like you're not there. Like, what are you doing here? And you want to say, hey, didn't you see me when you walked by, brother? And you want to get like some of these Mexican cholos. Hey, man, what's the matter with you, you know? <laughs> get your act together. When we come to the house of worship, we're brothers. Right. And we need to show... Let me tell you something. The Bible says that he who has friends will show himself friendly. Or he who shows himself friendly will have friends. I have a lot of friends. I make myself known where I go. I go in the restaurant. Hey, Jack, you want lemonade today? Yeah, bring me some. I have a restaurant ministry, as you can tell. <laughs> I lead a lot of waitresses and waiters to Christ. And so in the house of worship, I know some of you came expecting loves and hugs. I said, man, something's going to happen. Let me tell you something. I don't know if there's a Ku Klux spirit in some of you, but you need to drop it. <laughs> Amen. You need to get rid of it. Amen. We have this in the church and there's no room for it. My assistant pastor got up and told my congregation, he says, Well, Jack, either you love him or you hate him. <laughs> I'm very blunt. I pull no punches. I don't try to impress you. But I love you. And I believe that today God's going to do some neat things. So I want you to take a moment. They told me that lunch is at 12. Well, I told you it didn't have to yeah, but I didn't have breakfast, brother. <laughs> 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 so I'm going to try to be mindful to my child right now. <laughs> Whatever the Spirit has, we'll do. Amen? Amen. <laughs> like I tell my congregation, I, you know, I, I used to qu quit right on time, and, and, you know, whether I finished or not. And I sent my congregation free. I said, you know, if you want to leave, leave, you know. And I try to tell them, I'd rather see your roast burn in the oven than to see you burn in hell anyway. <laughs> you know. <laughs> And so, God is good. Hey, Amen. We came here to... I've been to Africa. And I said, when you go to Africa, you learn to worship and pray. Amen. From 8 in the morning till 11, 12 at night. And do some good things and do deliverance and worship God. Amen. So what I want you to do... How many of you from out of state, you've never been here? Everybody's been here? <clears throat> Especially you people that have never been here. I want you to take a moment or two. And I want you to walk around. And I don't want to see you in this camp. I'm, can I give orders, brother? <laughs> Passing by somebody not greeting him. We're family. We need to fall down barriers and strongholds. And if we work together and love each other, that's how they're going to know us. There's some black brothers here, black sisters. You need to hug them. And you need to pull through. Are you a Latino, brother? What are you? A Christian? Amen. 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 I gave up my Latino blood to accept the blood of Christ. Amen. <laughs> well, that's what we need to do this morning. I want you to just walk around and greet each other. Say, hey, glad you're here. Come on. Do it. Walk around. Amen. Give a hug to somebody. Don't be bashful. I told him. No. <laughs> Maybe later. I'm even glad you're here, buddy. I love you, my brother. Thank you, Jack. God bless you. Know. My wife's. My wife and me. So. Hey, brother. I want you to stand with me. I want you to stand with me this morning. I trust that God will uh, open our ears to hear and our eyes to see what the Spirit of God is saying. God didn't make us all millionaires, but He's our provider. And I'm going to entitle my message, God is our provider this Amen. morning. We can pull strongholds just by having faith enough to believe. Amen. Amen. I believe in casting out demons. I do that all the time. Uh, but I believe that we as the people of God need to stand and believe God at His Word. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the book of Second Peter. Don't sit down. I'm still in control up here. <laughs> <laughs> I believe the people of God need to have good time. Amen. Amen. 
2 Peter 1, 4. For by this he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises in order that by them you might become partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. And this morning I want to just minister as God the provider. I might go back to Deuteronomy 28 to minister to you. And just help you to stand and see the salvation of God. The habit of wealth is something that the people need to understand. Father, this morning I come before you in the name of Jesus and I'm asking, Father, that you would just break down the strongholds of unbelief and doubt in us, your people. And I'm asking, Father, that this day you would just minister according to your word and your will. Anoint the ears, Father, and anoint this tongue. Let your spirit minister, Father, and set us free that we might glorify you. You said you meet all our needs. That's your word. And so we're going to stand this morning and understand what you're saying to us. And so we bless you for it, Master, in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. amen. Now, before you sit down, I want you to look somebody in the eye and say, pay attention, you might learn something. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, we see the blessings of God. And I want to just take time to read those. Because I want us to understand that God says He's going to meet all our needs. He's going to take care of us. Once we learn to trust the Lord, I know that sometimes the, the, the gas tank in the car is empty. And I know that sometimes there's hardly no food. And I thank God for welfare. And I thank God for the provision of social security. But I believe that we need to understand, even for those of us that are working or have worked to have employers, that everything that comes to us is through a channel that God uses. God is our sole provider. Amen. God is in control. And once we understand that principle, we can begin to move through this life that when it looks like everything is shaking, that God is still going to make a way. I'm learning through these things that God works everything together for good for those that love Him, to those that are called according to His purpose. And so I move in that realm. I, I was having back trouble here because I, before I got saved, I had my back broken, my shoulders dislocated, and I had my head busted. My, my mother used to say, now you've got air in your brain, too. You know? <laughs> and I said, oh, well. They broke my shoulders, and uh, everything happened. And the other day, I, I was having problems. I had an accident in a car, and I got up, up real early, and I was looking uh, uh, in the backyard of my house there over the fence. I stepped on a rock about 18 inches high. I stepped on that rock, I don't know how many times, on that rock to look over. And that morning, that rock just went from under me. And I weighed 250 pounds. I'm a big taco, aren't you? <laughs> and I, I, I landed right on my back. Well, of course, when 250 pounds land, land on the ground, you create a, a dust form, you know. And so there was a lot of dust, and uh, I tell you, I, there was nothing to hold me, so I just landed right on my back. And I don't advise that anybody get healed that way, but I did. <laughs> God, I got out up there with no back, no back problem, and I haven't had no back problem. <laughs> so I said, God, you do all things well. <laughs> and uh, I don't advise you to fall down if you're having back problems. It's just that I had been praying. I said, God, you know, I need to be healed. And so I, said, I went over, and I just... Bam, you know, and I just laid there. And the first thing that came to my mind, I said, God, I hope nobody sees. I, nobody's watching me. You know? <laughs> and uh, so, but I got out of there and I've had no problem with my back and, and God's healed me. I give God the glory not to fall because God is a healer and he does things well. I want to just encourage you as the word teaches us. Let me just read to you. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Deuteronomy 28. And I want you to, to understand this principle that God takes care of us when it seems like there's nothing there. God will never leave us. And I know some of you here are probably on Social Security and welfare or whatever. And God bless you. You need to understand that that's not your source. My God is our source. And he's, he's already given, he's taken responsibility over us and our clan. Amen. So God's going to meet those needs. It says, now it shall come. It shall be if you will diligently obey the Lord your God, being careful to do His commandments which I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to do all things diligently. And all this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you if you will obey the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. 
Blessed shall there be in the offspring of your body and the produce of your ground and the offspring of your beast in the increase of your herd and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. I said, I'm going in and I'm going out. I'm going to be blessed. Hallelujah. I'm going to be blessed when I go out. I'm going to be blessed when I come in. And I get excited. Amen. I'm going out because I'm going to be blessed. And I'm coming in because I'm going to get blessed. <laughs> Whoa. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before you. They shall come out against you one way and shall flee before you seven ways. That means total annihilation and dis destruction. The Lord will command the blessing upon you in your, in your barns and in all that you put your hand to. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, as he swore to you, if you will keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. So all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. Now, he's not just talking here. He was talking here to the nation Israel. But remember that we are Israel. Yeah. Amen? We are Israel. We are the body of Christ. And this is the things that God has given us here. And the Lord will make you abound in prosperity in verse 11. In the offspring of your body, in the offspring of your beast, in the produce of your ground, in the land which the Lord swore to give to his fathers to give you. The Lord will open for you his good storehouse, the heavens to give rain to your land in, in the season, and to bless all the work of your hand. And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. Say, I'm the head. I'm the head. I am not the tail. And you only shall be above, and you shall commandments of the Lord your God, which I charge you today to observe them carefully. And do not turn aside from any of the words which I command you today to do the right, to the right or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. The word of the Lord gives us here about 14 verses of blessing. And if you continue reading that, that verse, that chapter, he's going to give you more on the curses. He gives you a lot more. It's like my boy, you know you have children. You say to your boy, here's $10, enjoy, behave, do good, you know. He messes up. I said, man, you give me back my $10, you give me 20 back, you work. And son, another thing, you won't watch TV, you won't use the phone, you won't go out, you're grounded. And so the punishment became more than the blessing. If we'd taken the blessing, we would have had even the TV and the phone and everything, amen. So God teaches us some things here. He says, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to give you everything that you need, and you're not going to be concerned. Let me just expound to you some of the experiences of my own life in the ministry. When I started the ministry as a pastor, I was an evangelist for 15 years before, or 16 years, and then I, I started pastoring. And when I started pastoring the church, of course, we didn't have any money. I got up one morning, <clears throat> I've been working uh, uh, the ministry, and I got up one morning, we're going to church. I told my wife, I says, how do you like New Joy? My wife looked at me and says, who sings that song? I said, oh, God. I said, I'll tell you tonight. <laughs> but my, the Lord has blessed me with a wife that has knitted her soul with me, her spirit with me, and her faith with me. And God has seen us through. I, I can stand before you and honestly declare before God that I probably have one of the best marriages. Not because there's no problems and no afflictions, but because we've learned how to work at it. And so she's in agreement. She says, I told her that night, I said, Hun, the Lord has asked me to start a work in Peoria. My wife looked at me and says, go for it, Jack. I said, let's do it. So we went about $6,500. <laughs> we didn't have any money. Rented a place. And from then, the Lord began, I began to move in faith. Every, every believer has to walk in faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. So this faith walk is, is for everyone. Some of you that say you don't have faith, you're lying. Because <laughs> the Lord says to everyone, he's given a measure of faith. See? So get rid of your lying spirit and get on with the program of God. Amen. So, in starting this work, of course, you know, in the ministry, like the brother says, you know, there's, I, I count life and the, the Christianity and walking in life as I learn some things. I, I look at life as a four seasons, you know. Sometimes there's a summer and every, the fruit is on the vine and you're, hey, praise God, the church is growing. And then, my Lord, fall comes and the people scatter. You wonder where in the world life is. There's no more leaves on the, on the tree, you know, and the fruit is gone. And then winter comes. And you wonder, say, God, you even left me. <laughs> and it's time to get in the barn and begin to sharpen your sickle. Because there's a spring coming, honey. And it'll be fruit in the vine again. Amen. 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 
And that's the, that's the way God operates in our lives a lot of times. And a lot of, of you wonder, well, why in the world do I go through all this test and stuff? Hey, if you have no obstacles, you don't know what it, it means to overcome. And God puts us sometimes through the ringer. I've been in the ringer so many times that I've been to the agitator that my pockets have been inside out and inside out and outside in. And all of a sudden you stand there like a wet pair of pants all wrinkled and say, God, what happened? <laughs> I just went through, through the agitator. He says, that's all right, I'm going to put you to the ringer now. <laughs> so God begins to move us and we begin to trust God. When we started the ministry, I, I told my wife one morning, I got up and said, Carol, the payment for the church is uh, in two days and I only have $200 in the checking. And my wife said to me, what are you going to do? I said, I'm telling you what I'm going to do, I'm going to trust God. Because God called me to this place. I didn't just come. I said, you watch God do a miracle. Two days later, a day later, next day, a brother drives from L.A., stopped by my house, says, Jack, I want to talk to you. I says, I was passing by, I'm going to North Carolina. The Lord told me to stop and give you this. He gave me an envelope. I couldn't wait for this brother to leave. Because I, <laughs> I knew there was money in the envelope, you know, but I didn't know how much. I said, oh, praise God, you know. I couldn't wait to get in the bedroom and look at it. <clears throat> I think when I said bye to him, I pushed him out the door. You know, hey, brother, ah, have a good trip. God bless you. <clears throat> <clears throat> and I got in the bedroom and uh, I opened up the, the envelope and there was uh, $4,000. <clears throat> <clears throat> I told my wife, I says, uh, how much is, when is the rent due? She said, tomorrow. I says, how much do I have? I said, 200. She said, I says, look at here. I got 4,200, honey. Because <laughs> my God will show himself strong. Amen. And God met the need. Another time, you know, I owed, uh, <clears throat> the following year, I owed uh, $1,700 to IRS. And I told my wife, I said, sign, sign it and send it in. I said, but you don't have the money. I says, my God will meet my need. I said, you just watch. So, okay, we signed it, sent it in. So, so when are you going to pay them? I says, when they bill me, the money will be here, honey. So you just watch God operate. And I'll tell you, sometimes I look at my wallet and I go, hello, whoa, 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 you know. <clears throat> and I owe the government $1,700. And I told my wife, sign it and send it. So by the time the government bills me, the money will be here, huh? Three days later, a brother walked in. Same thing, brother. So God sent me to give you this. And the same thing, you know, you go, brother, you know. You did what you're supposed to leave. <clears throat> and I went again to my bedroom. That's why I check out the blessing of God. <clears throat> and I went back to the bedroom, and there I, I counted, and there was $1,700 bill. Let me tell you something. This God is real, brother. Amen. This God is real. He's alive. Amen. He didn't go up to a corner somewhere and, and forgot us. He said, I'm going to meet your needs. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to supply them because I love you. And I'll tell you that I got the $1,700 and I told my wife, I said, this money does not belong to IRS. It's in my hands. I said, so I'm going to take $400 and I'm going to give it back to the ministry. My wife said, now what are you going to do when they bill me? The 400 will be back. Huh? You just watch. I'm going to tell you when the government wrote back to me. And they bill me. He said, you made a mistake in your addition. You only owe us 1300 <laughs> Come on, give the Lord a good clap off him. <laughs> Turn around and look at somebody and say, you better learn some things today. Look at somebody. Because my God is still in control. My God is still in control. This God is an awesome God. Amen. Amen. My God is an awesome God. See, that's what God says. We are made partakers of the divine nature through the promise. See, what we need to do is we need to man manipulate the divine nature. Amen? Into the human nature so that God can begin to work through us. And my God will supply all our needs according to His riches and glory. I know some of you have been crying out to God and said, Oh, you're going to... He's going to do it. That's why I told you last night about your children. How can your children who you prayed for be lost? Let me tell you something. It is insane to pray and ask God to do something and then turn around and let your mind tell you it will never happen. It is insanity. Let this mind be in you. Oh, somebody praise Him. 
He's alive. He's real. He answers prayer. Oh, hallelujah. This is a God that we serve. Amen. I'll tell you, there's a, a, a habit that we need to form. It's, it's a habit to realize the provision that God made for us. God, I have a habit that my God is... My, you know, I've had people, when I started my church, brother, I've had people come, He'll never make it. He'll never grow. It reminds me, we used to have red carpet like this in the mortuary when we bought it. I finally took the caskets out of the nursery. <laughs> You know, when you get into a mortuary and you begin to minister, I'll share some of the things with you. I still have 30 minutes. <laughs> but, you know, when you get people into a mortuary, I mean, every little creepy thing, the people are spooky, you know. Like all the spirits are there. You know, I said, goodness gracious, man. Grow up. I remember I went into the kitchen one day and there's a bell over the door. And I myself, I said, the, I didn't know there was a bell over the, in the kitchen. And this thing went, ding dong. <laughs> and I said, oh God. <laughs> and it happened that the door was open. He was letting me know the front door was open. You know, I said, oh God. And my wife looked at me and says, great man of faith, what's going on? <laughs> I said, did you hear that? I said, yeah, it's a bell up here. <laughs> Woo! I had goosebumps. I looked like Popeye, you know. <laughs> 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 you know, sometimes we don't want to talk about money, whether in the spirit or out of the spirit. Sometimes it doesn't become a natural thing. But God spoke a lot about money and the needs. And he said that he would meet all our needs according to his riches and glory. And I believe God will do it again and again and again. Amen. Sometimes we say, oh, well, I, I, I have just got through the day. It was a real hassle, but I just made it. And, and we have a thinking that, man, life is just... You know, a grind, you know. I tell you, being a Christian is exciting. I don't know how to operate when there's no pressure, brother. I've never known how to operate when there's no pressure. One of the brothers says, Brother, you better slow down. You're going to get burned up. I said, I'm already consumed in the fire of God. <laughs> Amen. There's no more burning, brother. I've been delivered. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The blessing of the Lord is so tremendous that I believe... As Oswald said, that God would, would tax the, the smallest grain and the farthest star to meet all our needs yes. because He loves us. Amen. And God is going to do it again and again and again. Yes. Amen. If, if we give way to self-pity, and, and some of you, I know anybody been there in a pity party? Huh? Nobody showed up, huh? <laughs> Nobody. The worst place you can be is in a pity party in your situation. Sometimes God don't even want to show up. <laughs> I ain't going to go there. If you stir that up in you, sometimes we start feeling sorry for ourselves. Don't feel sorry for yourself because I don't. I don't feel sorry for you. You know, I want to stir you up to believe that God is with you. That's why, you know, sometimes I've, I've had that, those thoughts. I've had those things. says, nobody cares. No more. I'm going to eat worms and die. You know, you know it's, it's just miserable here. And then God sends people and says, God sent me to tell you, brother, to shake it off and get with the program because he loves you. Thank you. I'm glad you came. So we give in to self-pity and indulge in luxury of misery. And we wonder what in the world is going on that, that we feel like God has left us. And, and we minister sometimes. We preach the gospel with power while we're thinking, are you going to meet my paycheck or not? Let me tell you something. He's never late, but he's always on time. This is the God that we serve. And I want you to believe that uh, to the missionary, the, the brothers who are missionaries, like Brother Perry. This brother, uh, you know, I, I thank God that he didn't send me to the mission field. But I'll go to the mission, I go to the mission field. I, I go to Africa. I go to Mexico. I minister. But I'll tell you one thing. When God begins to get a hold of us and believe that, you know, the missionary, you and your home, you've got to believe God for your payments and everything. The walk of faith. And without faith, it is what? To what? That's it. One sister said to a pastor, said, well, this sister came from your church and she says she's tired of hearing about faith. I says, she needs to get saved, brother. Or delivered or kicked out. <laughs> you see, there's no, no. <laughs> see, brother, you keep kicking people out of the church and says, they ain't nothing but problems. 
No sin is greater than self-pity. It obliterates the power of God or God from everything in our lives. Self-pity says, ain't no God. He can't do it. And pretty soon yourself and the demonic forces get a hold of you and you go crawling on the ground like a snake. Amen? Are you getting anything or are you just laughing? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to get you to shake some things off this morning because I believe, you see what happens when we get into self-pity and we obliterate God, we put self on the throne. Amen. You know, the Bible teaches us, Who, whose temple are you? Who's at the throne? That's why we have so many contentions and dissensions on some of the doctrines, you know. Who's on the throne? What mark do you have on your, on your head? Whose mind is in you? Who's ruling? Amen. This is what we need to understand. It opens our mouth to spit out murmurings and, and, life, and, and our lives become craving spiritual sponges. And there's nothing lovely or generous about that. Amen. But I believe that God today wants to permeate you as water, a sponge. He wants to soak you with truth until you can shake off everything of unbelief and doubt. Amen. Until we know that my God is going to set me free. He's going to change things for me because he promised he would. And the Word of God is His provision to us. He says, I'm going to take care of you if you trust me. The greatest thing that any believer can do, brother, is trust God. Amen. That's why a lot of times churches fail. And I believe because they see the people. And uh, one brother came to my church one time and says, I wanted to let you know that there was 220 people in your church today. I got so upset. I says, who told you to count my people? Brother? Don't you ever do that again. I'm not moved by people. I'm moved by God. It doesn't depend if I have a thousand or a hundred or two. I preach two walls. And my, my duty is to preach. One thing I don't give in to the, to the people is, is they get frustrated with me, brother. I had a couple of people leave and said, well, we found out you can't be bought. I said, I've already been purchased, honey. I'm not for sale no more. <laughs> and this is what we need to do is understand that God will meet all our needs according to his let me tell you, when God is beginning to be satisfied with us, He will impoverish everything in the nature of infectious money and destroy everything around us to meet every need until you're no longer trusting on mammon or men, until you're totally trusting in God. You know, I lease drugs. I buy stuff for the church. And people say, I says, how are you going to do it? I says, who cares, man? If they take the building, we'll preach in the street. Like if this is our security. See, our security has to be told in God. Amen? If the majesty and grace and power of God are not being manifested in us, let me tell you something. God holds us responsible. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If the power and majesty of God is not in us, God holds us responsible because God is not withholding from you. God didn't call me out of darkness into this marvelous light to, watch, to see me be defeated. The Bible says that I am an overcomer. I'm washed in the blood. I am sanctified. I'm no longer a, a turkey. I soar with the eagles. <laughs> I no longer gobble, gobble, brother. <laughs> hey, I'm the head and not the tail. I walk like that not because the bank account is full, but because God is on the throne. Amen. Not because everything is being met, but because God is on the throne. I don't worship God because I feel good, but because He's on the throne. He's King. He's Lord. He's Savior. He's Deliverer. Anointed. Holy one. Yes. Come on, somebody. Look at somebody. Say, you better get excited about this stuff. Uh, the Bible teaches that God is able to make grace abound. And then the grace of God is sufficient. And he'll make it abound. He's a, he's a God of grace. And what we, that's why I tell you, man, we need to learn how to leverage the love of God on others. I'll tell you, some of the people in the house of worship, man, they're so stingy. I mean, stingy, brother. I tell the people, I says, what's your time? He says, $10.01. <laughs> Make me more book work for putting a penny than if they would just give, keep their penny. The people, let me tell you something. Some people will never be blessed beyond what God says because they're still under law. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's all right, dude. I'm not telling you, tell you don't give your tithing and don't expect it. Expect it. God says, this, this belongs to God. When you begin to give offerings and begin to give to God. Last night, who's this brother? I, I was standing behind a brother. And the, stand up, brother. I'm not wanting to embarrass you, but stand up. Come over here. I'm, I'm not trying to do anything funny. You see those shoes? Those are nice shoes. You like those shoes, brother? 
Sure did. God told me to take my shoes off and give them to this man. And I said, God, these are my best shoes. <laughs> Amen. When God speaks, you better obey. Amen. You know what I do? I like shoes and I like... I have more suits. And I got more shoes. I got a new truck. Paying for it. Got a nice van for the church. Enlarge the, the church. Why? Because my God... You know, a lot of times people say, well, how are you going to do it? I say, I'm going to do it and then God will meet the need. If you wait for God to have it in your hands, you'll never do anything. If this brother had waited for everything that's in this place, in this camp grounds, he would have never done anything. But he moved in faith. We're going to build. God's going to meet the need. God is going to supply. And that's the way God operates. Amen. I'm not talking about stupidity. I'm not talking about just getting it. I'm doing it for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Are you hearing what God is saying? <clears throat> about a building. <laughs> this is good stuff. Let me tell you something. When you get stand with God's nature, the blessing of God will come through you all the time. I went to, to, um, I went to Yuma to see a brother. I don't know if you know Brother Ruben. He's in Yuma, Arizona. Brother Ruben Fontanes. He's a Puerto Rican. He says, my name is Fontaine. I says, no, it's Fontanes, brother. You're Puerto Rican. <laughs> I went to see Brother Ruben in, in his house, his, the house of worship. I says, God, Ruben. I says, what's all this stuff? There was no none of this stuff, no ceiling, just... And the, and the tar, whatever's in the roof, was seeping through in the summer. You know, he said, he said brother, I'm a mission. I said, but what's all this stuff? <laughs> I said, no wonder that the sister, there's no carpet. The floor was thin. I said, you should see him on Sunday morning when it's 120. The people are going like this because all the tar's coming down, brother. <laughs> no carpet. No refrigeration. I mean, in Yuma, it gets up to about 120 or so. I mean, it gets hot over there. But there's not the humidity we have here. And I went over there and I said, Brother, what's, 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 what's this stuff? He said, Brother, I'm a mission. I said, Reuben, I said, <clears throat> somebody just gave me a warehouse full of a carpet and gave me tile and stuff. I have a mission. I'm starting a mission. I'm down from my church and that building. I want to share some of the things with you to encourage you how God operates. Oh, God. Take the tile, brother, and take it with you. I said, nice tile. And I gave it to Reuben. I said, take it, brother. So I got up next Sunday, you know, I told the church, I said, you know, we just blessed the church with about $3,000 or $4,000 worth of tile. And they came and got it. And about two weeks later, Reuben says, I want you to come and preach in my church, brother. So I went to Yuma. And the tile, I mean, he's got a big building, way bigger than this one. And it covered his whole floor with this beautiful, kind of greenish lime looking tile, brother. Beautiful. And I looked at it and said, man, I'm sorry I gave it to you. You know what I mean? <laughs> <clears throat> He had the tile all over. He says, Jack, <clears throat> do you know how much tile you gave me? I said, well, I, says, uh, I told the people I gave you about three or $4,000. He says, I had it appraised. And all the pieces that were broken, aside from that, he says, you gave us $20,000 worth of time. And uh, Mama, I'm coming home. <laughs> $20,000 worth. He says, and when you did that, brother, I sat him here and I told God, the people were saying, what are these ugly boxes of stuff doing here? He says, Those, that's the spoil that God has given us. He says, you leave it there. And they put it in front of the altar. He says, for a week it was there. He says, Jack, when you started doing that to us, a man came into my office and, and walked by and he says, why is it so hot in here? He said, I don't have no refrigeration. He said, let me walk by. He said, three years ago, you ministered to me. And Reuben said to this man, I don't remember. He said, but you ministered to me. It says, you have no refrigeration. I said, how come you don't have nothing on the ceiling here? I said, I don't have money. No insulation. The man says, I'll be right back. And the week when Reuben called me, they had put all this drop ceiling like this, insulation, 27 tons of refrigeration in this church, tile all over, brand new carpet all over the platform, and you walk in the church and the glory of God, because God meets all our needs. Let me tell you something. Some of us walk around like God cut us off with a shielding and says, here, forget you. This God takes care of us. Amen. And he needs all, Amen. everything. Let me, let me, listen to me. Amen. Don't pity party with me. Because I know this God, brother. He's alive. He's real. Amen. I got saved coming out of the L.A. County Jail 26 years ago. My mother, a believer. My father died, an evangelist. My father died when he was 41 years old. My, my father died when I was 8 years old. My mother, she used to call me, you devil's disciple. <laughs> You're going to serve God one of these days. I, said, I don't want to serve your God. Don't tell me about your God. Listen, mama. 
My mama said, you're going to serve God. I said, I don't want to serve God. I said, you will serve my God. Pow! <laughs> my, mother had, my mother was about this high. And she had a... You know how grandmas do? They have a hand that goes from here to the back. Yeah. Pow! And I used to tell my mom, I don't want to serve your God. I run out of the house and in the middle of the street it was like something. Pow! I go back and I kneel down. Mama, forgive me. When I got saved, brother, I got saved coming out of Lake County Jail in the Nazarene Church. And I drove from L.A. to New Mexico. And I told my mom, I said, I, I come to ask forgiveness, Mama. Oh! Shout hallelujah, Mama. Come on, shout hallelujah with me. <laughs> she don't want to shout hallelujah. <laughs> well, then, let me tell you something. When I, when I went there, I knelt before my mother. I said, Mama, I want you to forgive me. For everything and all the pain and all the hate. She looked at me, brother. She says, if, you, if God forgives you one son, I forgive you a thousand times. And that mama, I love my mama. I, I tell people, yeah, my mother used to hit me with a log over the head. <laughs> I love my mama. And God began to move in a tremendous way as I began to yield. I worked during the hippie movement with the hippies. Touched hundreds of young people that are still ministers and preaching the word. Preached in the streets. Preached to the whores, to the prostitutes. Went and did what God told me to do. Let me tell you, my God is an awesome God. That's why one of the things you need to understand is when the winds of adversity come, you need to shake it off. Because when you're under pressure and adversity comes to you, you need to understand that adversity is the element of life that will bring out the true character of man. And some of you are saying, why do I go through trials? Because God wants to perfect you and make you more like... Amen. Diamonds are not made in the air, honey. They're made under pressure and fire. Amen. Amen. You're going to shine like the stars. I mean, you're going to be pressured. Stop saying, why has why this happened? Let me tell you something. You can pray as much as you want to for the devil and the demons to be removed. And they're going to leave you for a season. But they're coming back. Because his job is to keep you in tune. Come on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You say, brother, don't cast him out. I say, cast him out by all means. My Lord, who wants him? But he's got a job to do. And he's good at what he's doing. He came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He came, Jesus came, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. He came that we might rule and reign with him. That we are seated with him in heavenly places at the right hand of the Father. Amen. I love it when Stephen was being martyred for the cause of Christ. I loved it when Jesus stood up and gave him a standing ovation. Stephen, all right. And I believe this is what we need to see, that when we're in there for God and we feel like we're being pressured and martyred and everything, let me tell you, when I got to, when I got to Youngtown, Arizona, I was in Peoria, I was in the storefront. I said, I don't want, I don't want to buy this, this mortuary. I don't want to go to Youngtown. Youngtown's only about two, three miles from where I was. I've been there for two and a half years. And I went to the storefront, I went to this guy, and a, a lady was there, a realtor was selling the property next door. I says, I need to find some property. I need to either buy or lease with option to buy. I was paying $4,000 a month rent to this storefront. I says, and I'm not going to be giving this money to these people no more. She says, I'll go talk to my broker and I'll be back. <clears throat> Within a half hour, the broker came back. <clears throat> and he said to me, I hear you're looking for property. I says, I'm not interested in property. <laughs> he walked in my office and I'm reading he says, well, my, the lady told me you were looking for property. I put down the papers. I'm interested in your soul. I said, I can preach in the streets. I've done it many times. I said, I'm going to tell you what's your problem. <laughs> this realtor just walked in. You know, he's looking at me. He said, my problem? I said, yeah, your problem. I said, you're having a lot of problems with one of the members of your family. There's a lot of chaotic things in your home right now. I said, and there's a lot of dissension. I says, and God wants to restore you to fellowship. He started crying. He says, who told you this? <laughs> I said, the Spirit of the Lord just told me this. He says, my, my oldest son hasn't spoken to me for three years. He led him to the Lord. He wept like a, like a young boy. He just wept and wept there in my office. <clears throat> and after he stopped weeping, I led him to the Lord and, and I prayed with him. I said, now let's go see the building. <laughs> and we went to see the building. I'm going to this town and I'm saying, I don't want to move to young town. And I go into this mortuary place. And mortuaries are nice. The buildings are nice. You know. 
And I walked in that place. I said, my Lord, I sure would like to have this place for a church. It's better than the storefront. I had uh, like 5,400 square feet at the storefront. And the, the church building was 5,500. So I told the guy, I said, let me tell you, the elders got mad with me, brother. Because <laughs> I didn't have an elders meeting or a board meeting. I said, look, they want to sell us a building. I'll give them $1,000. That's all I had was $1,000. I said, I'll give you $1,000. And you take uh, the $1,000 and go tell the owner that in 60 days, I'm going to see what God's going to do. So the 59th day, I didn't have the money. So I, said, I called him up. I said, go tell the owner that I don't have the money. But if God wants me there, I'm going to be there. Just tell him that I said that. He came back within 40 minutes. And he says, I've never seen it in my life. I've been a realtor all my life. I've never seen this thing. Somebody's working for you. I said, no, we work together. He don't work for me. I said, well, he's a co-laborer with me. This G's. He says, he brought me a contract. I says, he already sent the contract. And he, they sold me 650,000 property, dollar property, with just my signature. He says, I've never seen it. I said, tell him to take 550,000. Tell him to write off 100,000. So he did. So I signed it. He says, he wants the same payment you're giving over there for rent for payment. I said, praise God. So on December the 24th, we moved into our new facility. And here comes two policemen. You think this only happens in Russia, you know? Here comes two police cars. And I said, we want you to clean this property. We want all this. I said, well, well, wait a minute. I said, this property has been empty for a year and a half. He said, well, well, I said, how much time do I have to clean this property? He said, we'll give you one week. I said, okay. So I rented a tractor, mowed the weeds, and I was dumping them in the, in the wash, because part of the wash belongs to the church property. And here comes another policeman. He says, we hear we have some illegal dumpsters here. I said, you're going to have dirt in your face if you don't get out of here, man. I'm sick and tired of you guys harassing me like this. If you got rules, you go bring me your rules, because I'm not here to break your rules. And he looked at me and he says... Pastor Duran, you do what you want. I said, thank you, sir. Kept doing it. I told the people, I said, I will minister to the city council. And I will preach to the government of the city the word of God. And God will give us favors and we will grow here. I painted the church and here comes another policeman. You don't have permission to paint your church. I said, I need permission to paint my church? And then I remodeled the church. Started remodeling. Here comes the city inspector. You're supposed to put a post here. I said, I ain't going to put no post there. I says, he got mad. I said, I can park helicopters up there now if I want to. He got mad and left. He wrote me a letter. said, I wash my hands off of you. <laughs> the guy that was helping me said, he can't do that. He's a building inspector. I said, he just washed it, brother. Don't bother with a bill. <laughs> and the hassle of the city was so tremendous. Another city gave me modular buildings. Gave me 5,400 buildings, square feet of buildings. Let me tell you something. You don't mess around with God. Let me tell you, this God is in our, on our side. And when God began to move in this area and the people began to... They gave me this property and I, I went to talk to the uh, zoning uh, commission and I went to the city government. And they said, we're going to box you in. We're, you won't even have a kitchen. I said, you're too late. I already have a kitchen. You won't fit the hungry. I said, I am feeding the hungry. I said, the, the, the guy that was in charge of, of zoning, he said, I'm going to box you in. I said, God will remove you out of my way and we're going to box you in. <laughs> Come on. Started ministering to the city, brother. I told the people, I laid hands on this wall of my church, and, and I used to go like this. I said, wall, you're coming down. And my mind tried to deceive me, but it wouldn't get it into agreement to disagree with the Spirit. It says, wall, you're coming down. And the people used to look at me and say, yeah, big deal. And people left the church, and they went and badmouthed the preacher, and they said, he'll never build. And when I built, they wanted to come back. I said, no, you don't come back here. You find you someplace else where you can cause trouble like you cause here. Not here no more. Amen. Let me tell you something. God is an awesome God. We began to build and we began to grow. And I was in the city council and I, the, the, one of the councilmen came against me. And he was coming against me terribly. And the, we were sitting in court like the city council and the, and the mayor was there. And the mayor... They were coming against me, you know, trying to... One lady, let me tell you what happened. I walked into the meeting. I brought one of my elders and one lady, brother, she walked into me right in front of the whole people and yelled, 
Get your church out of this city. We don't want your church in this city. And she had a cross about four by five inches right here. And I was mad, brother. I said, that cross is going to choke you. It's going to choke you because you don't know the God that I know. And it got quiet. There was about this many people in the meeting. I said, that cross is going to choke you. And I will not leave the city. You will leave the city. You either drive out or go out in a casket. You will not stay in the city with me. Silence. Let me tell you something. God is not going to be mocked. We're not a bunch of wimps. We're not trying to beat people up. But there's times when we have to take a stand for righteousness. And God began to move. And one of the, uh, the councilmen uh, tried to says, you got people parking in the streets when you're meeting. I says, that's a lie. I said, let me ask you something. His name is Samick. Mr. Samick, let me ask you something. I said, I'm not, I'm not fighting your dancing, your partying in the city. I'm not fighting that. I said, but I drove through here Friday. And there were cars all over the streets because you guys were having a dance. And that's your thing. I said, but there were cars parked all over the streets. I said, what are you going to do about that? He says, you don't tell me how to run the city. He says, you don't tell me how to run my church. I said, I'm here by divine order. And when you tell the people, I'm here to do warfare, they don't understand that. You know, they'll see grenades and tanks, <laughs> machine guns. You know? There was a Tibetan foundation, which is the new age stuff. Down the corner, says, there's a Tibetan foundation. I said, I just found out. One of the guys said, Jack, there's witchcraft in the city. I said, show me where, man. Let's go. And I went to the city. I preached to the government. They voted me not to bring my buildings uh, three to two. And when I was preaching to the city, I was preaching. I preached to them for 40 minutes. The word of God. And my God will do. This city belongs to the kingdom. God didn't send me here just to be another church in the corner. My God will give us the city. When I got that building, I was praying at midnight. I said, God, why did you send me to young town? He says, that's the only city I send you to. God used to wake me up at midnight. At 2 in the morning. At 3 in the morning. My wife says, where are you going? I'm getting dressed. I'm putting my pants on. I said, I'm going to Youngtown. I was in Peoria. Preaching. So what are you doing in Youngtown? I said, I got to go prophesy to every home. And I would, for a year and a half, I drove the streets of the city. At midnight, brother. At 11, at 6, at 3, 4 in the morning, God would wake me up. And I would drive east and west and north and south. And I speak to every house. This city belongs to the kingdom of God. This house will know that God is here. This people will know that my God reigns. These people will be saved. The anointing of God. The government will know that God is in the city. And God sent me to that city. And I said, God, why didn't you send me here? This is the only city I sent. Then he brought to my remembrance what I was doing every night. And the times that he woke me up to go to the city. And when I was preaching to the government, the mayor came against me. And then there was a Tibetan foundation, which is New Age. And the Tibetan Foundation came against me. And I went into the Tibetan Foundation. And after we had the meeting, the Tibetan, I went to the Tibetan Foundation. I said, what's all these crystals and this pyramids? I was playing stupid. I knew what they were. I said, no, tell me. What is this stuff? I said, you don't know, sir? I said, no, tell me. And then he says, well, you have a crystal in your, in your watch. I said, yeah, I said, but it runs the time. It doesn't, I don't worship it. So I just kept walking. And the guy says, well, this crystal, are this, you get power from and stuff. And I looked him right in the eye. And I says, you're a lying spirit. And you will not stay in this city with me. He says, we'll see. I says, we'll see. When I had the meeting with the government, the Tibetan Foundation was there in the midst of the meeting. And they were selling the Crystal Kids magazine. And I went over to the lady. I says, what's this junk? She said, junk. Well, I said, this stuff, what is it? I'm sorry. He says, what is it? She says, you don't know? I said, we teach, we get power. And I looked her in the eye. I said, you will not stay in the city with me. You're a lying spirit. You will leave the city. And she said, we'll see. I said, we'll see. A month and a half later, the mayor died. The lady that was doing this thing in the city, she died. She went to India to learn more of this stuff, and she died there. I said, you will not stay in the city with me. Let me tell you something. We're not playing just with words. This no, God sir. is real. No, sir. I'm telling you something that is mean for your heart. We're not just sheer shouting hallelujah to the wind. The word hallelujah is the highest praise you can give our God. And this God is real. I want to encourage you that God's going to meet every need that he says he will. Because God is real. We took, another, we took another property in another city. And God has given us favor with the city. Before the mayor died after the meeting, he called me to be on the parade with him. And I was in a convertible, brother. With the higher ups. <laughs> then they gave me hot dogs and steaks. 
And my God will supply all our needs. Don't be intimidated by circumstances and situations. God is still in control. It doesn't matter what you see around you. You see the raging of murders and everything in our cities. Let me tell you something. We already know these things. The devil's not taking over. What's the matter with you? God is in control. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Everything in the kingdom, everything on the earth belongs to God. Don't belong to the devil. He just misappropriated, changed, perverted, and did everything that God belongs to God. And if people like you and I walk in fear and intimidation, we'll never see the manifestation because we'll walk in frustration. Amen. We need to get rid of this garbage and begin to believe that God is who He says He is and walk in the power of the anointing of God so we can see the blessing of God appropriated to those that belong to the kingdom. Amen. I'm going to close with this story and hopefully I'll be able to preach some more. Are you getting anything here? Of what God is saying to us, brother? Because God is going to do it. There was a little building, used to be a, a, a mission, a just a run-down place. And I used to go lay hands on this building. I said, God, give me this building. Let me do something with it. I laid hands. For the longest time, nothing would happen. And I, finally, I called. I found there was a sign there that said for sale. I called the realtor and said, I want to buy this property. He says, we want $135,000. I said, you're sick in the head. I said, that property ain't worth that much. I can buy a John F. Long home in Phoenix, I said, for 45000 brand new. I said, I ain't going to give you no one thirty-five. I said, well, that's what we're asking. The building is probably about 6,000 square feet. A little church, the building, everything. I said, you're sick in the hay. Said, it's not worth that much. And it happened that this building had been dedicated for the glory of God in 1967, but a part of it. And the doctor, Shackleford, had put a plague, uh, bronze plague on it in memory of his wife for the work and service to God. And I still have that in front of the church. I never took it off. I said, we didn't start this work. This doctor and his wife started this work and we're picking up the, and redoing it. And let me tell you what happened. Stand with me because I know you're already tired. Some of you are young. See, all it takes for me to quit is two youngs. <laughs> and I know, uh, you know, uh, we're going to have to pray that God gives you three-hour chairs, Brother Glenn. <laughs> I have three-hour chairs in my church, but and let me tell you what happened with this building. As God begins to to under, uh, we begin to look to God to meet our needs and and everything. This brothers wanted one hundred thirty-five thousand. You you're crazy. I said, I ain't gonna give you that money. So they called me back and they said, brother, uh, Pastor Duran, we want to talk to you. We want to give you the building for fifty-five thousand. <laughs> I said, you're still sick. <laughs> So they called me again, brother, and they said, well, we talked about it. Now we want to give it to you for 45. I said, let me tell you something. Don't bother me. Don't waste my time and I won't waste yours. If God wants me there, I'm going to be there at the right time, at the right price. That's the way it is. So don't bother me no more. I said, I don't want to talk about it no more. Three months later, they called me. So I want to take you out for breakfast. I mean, that'll get my attention. <laughs> so let's go eat. <laughs> And what happened is that the, the man said, uh, we want to sell you the building for 20000 I said, I'll buy it for a million dollars if you make my payment $125 a month. Bottom line is payments, right? Because I don't intend to be here for another 30 years. Oh, I'm going to be with Jesus. <laughs> I said, uh, what's the deal? The guy, the realtor says, we're going to charge you 8% interest. The other guy said, no interest. I said, what's the deal? He says, give us 20000 Give us $5,000 down and 125 a month. I said, fine. Write out the contract and give it. I'll sign it tomorrow. I didn't have the money. I went and borrowed the money. I went and got the 5000 I said, here's the 5000 That was three years ago. I think I owe about 9000 on the building now. And they gave it to me for that price. And... When I went in that building, I mean, the roof, there was nothing but it. The way I described this church in Yuma, this building was worse. I could see God through the ceiling, through the roof. I mean, it had holes this big. The frustration was that I, I, I swept water out of that building when it rained, I don't know how many times. Frustrated. The roof leaked. The roofers ripped me off with money and, you know, just a real trial. And what happened is through this all, God began to move. And I gave it to a couple of brothers. They couldn't do nothing with it. I finally took it over and I started remodeling and refixing it. And we just dedicated it last week. We got the roof fixed, the ceilings, refrigeration, new kitchen, new floor. Lovely, beautiful place.
for the mission of God. Let me tell you, when God is in control, no one, no one, and nothing can hinder the blessing of the Lord. When, you're in, when God is in charge, nothing can hinder it. So I want to encourage you today. I don't know where you are financially or spiritually. But my God will supply all your needs. They wanted to take my church away from me. The owner wrote. He says, I'm taking back. I said, no, you're not. I said, I'm here by divine order. You can have it. He said, I know. Baptist brother. He got sick. The Baptist brother got sick. And I said, what's the matter with you? You're losing too much weight here. Are you on a diet? He said, no. I went on a diet. I can't control it. I said, I know how to fix it. I took him in the back room, brother, and did deliverance. And God healed him, set him free. He was going to take the building away. So I made him an offer. Another building's worth. Uh, I got a new uh, uh, appraisal of my building. The building had gone down to 400, 420000 And the man, I said, I offer you 250000 and a write-off. He says, I'll take it. Okay. On my way home, the Lord speaks to my spirit and says, go visit this woman. I'll go visit. If you want to hear God, women usually have money. <laughs> Yeah, they hide it under the mattress. Man, you want to find money? Go under the mattress. No. And I went over there, brother. Let me tell you something. When I did that, God began to move. And, and I knocked on the door of his sister. I said, um, this is a business call. I don't know if you have money or not. <clears throat> that Sunday morning I was preaching. The phone rang. This happened on the Monday when I went. And a lady said, uh, there's a lady on the phone who wants to lend you $200,000. I said, I'll take it. I went on a Monday, went, knocked on the door. I talked to the owner. I said, uh, can you, uh, I need $50,000. <laughs> the lady said, you're crazy. I said, yeah, don't tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and so what happened is that God began to move in a mighty way. And God began to bless. And I said, uh, I don't know if you have money or not, sister. I said, but I need $50,000 to buy out the church. She said, Pastor, I get 24000 on my return. I mean, 24% on my return. I said, I'll pay, I'll pay you 24%. Lend me the money. Because I knew God was going to meet the need. And what happened, brother, is that God turned it around. And she said, if you're going to pay me 24%, he said, I'll have the money for you in two weeks. I said, fine. By the time I got to the church, the man had already upped the price to 275 In another half hour, he raised it to 284 So my wife says, what are you going to do now? I says, you think God's going to drop us? He's already given us 250000 You think he's not going to come up with 34000 What's the matter you? <laughs> and my God. So you just watch God. I had two weeks to get the money. The following morning, the lady was going to uh, lend me the money, was crying, called me at 8 o'clock at church, and she was weeping. And she says, I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to be able to give you the money, um, to lend you the money. God spoke to me. He didn't let me sleep. He said, I'm bringing you the 50000 I'm giving it to you. Hallelujah. Hurry up. <laughs> I asked the man, how much time do I have to get the 34000 And the man said to me, I said, I'll give you two weeks. So I didn't have the money. I called him up. I said, I need to meet with you. I need to have a meeting. He said, do you have the money? I, I didn't tell him. I said, no, I need to meet with you. I'm not going to say anything until I meet with you for lunch. He said, okay. I said, I'll see you at 12. I hung up. The phone rang. A sister said, the Lord spoke to me to bring you $20,000, Jack. I said, do it immediately. <laughs> she said, I'll have it there in two hours. Okay. I went to the owner. And he says, do you have the money? I said, well, I, I need $14,000. He got mad. He said, I'm not going to carry you. And I'm not going to, you either rent, uh, make a new contract for rent or whatever. I'm not going to carry you. And I'm going to tell you something. I said, look at me. How much time do I have to get the 14000 He says, I'll give you till tomorrow at 3. I says, by tomorrow at 3, I will cash you out. The building belongs to the kingdom. And I looked him right in the eyes. I says, because of your CPA and your realtor that came against me, my God will show himself strong on our behalf, and I will cash you out by 3 o'clock. That building belongs to New Joy Ministries. I said, I'll see you tomorrow. I couldn't sleep the following morning at 5 in the morning. I, I got up, went before the Lord in prayer. The Lord says, call this lady. You see, ladies have money. <laughs> and at 8 o'clock I called her I said sister I need $14,000 to cash out on the church the lady says no problem I'll have him there in two hours for you by noon we had cashed out and the church belonged to New Joy come on give the Lord a clap over and stand with me my God will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory for by are given to us
exceeding great and precious promises that by this ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. My God is an awesome God. Let me tell you something. Don't be moved by your circumstances. Be moved with God. God will supply all your needs and God will meet you. I don't know why God hasn't allowed me to, to have a lot of money, but I send my check out to pay for the church on Friday and it's there by Sunday. It's been like that. But I haven't missed a payment in 10 years. And I have to make my payments every week, not once a month. And my payments are $1,500 just for the church. And God meets our needs because He's God. Don't walk in intimidation. You walk in the presence of God and see God do miracles. He's a miracle, supernatural working God. And my God is going to take care of you. Get it in your spirit. Get it in your mind. Get it in your body. This God. I said this God. I said this God will meet all our needs. And He's the one that's called us to do the work. And He will furnish every tool, every finance, everything that we need to finish and accomplish that which He's called us to do. Amen. You move on with God and see God bring it to you. Somewhere along the line, the ravens are coming. And they'll feed you by the brook. Oh, he'll have to hit a rock again to get water for you. But my God will do it again and again. Turn around and tell somebody, I'm getting excited about worshiping God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God, my God. Amen. It's an awesome God. Amen. Father, I thank you this morning for the word of the Lord. And I trust, Father, that this word would just saturate and permeate the hearts of your people. God, we're a people. You said you meet all our desires and our needs. So we trust you today for the salvation of our children, and for the salvation of our loved ones, for the needs of this camp and this camp meeting and this ground, for the brother who's been diligent. We talked about the word diligent, Lord, and that means we're careful to work hard. And not give up in the midst of adversity. Father, we've learned in life that failures are nothing but stepping stones to success. And so we magnify you, God. You are an awesome God. So I praise you for it. Father, I'm asking this morning that you would also bless the food, the provision that you set for us. And so we just thank you for it, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. In times past, you have looked to the left and to the right. But in this season, I am calling you to keep your face, your eyes on my face and my strength. For the joy that will be there, the Father would say to you, would be an unspeakable joy. And the peace that would flood your soul will cause you to arise above the heights of torment. And you shall know that the Lord your God is the one in the midst of you, who does battle and rolls up the sliver of his right hand for you. Therefore do not fear, for the Spirit of God has come upon you that you will not fear and quake and shake on the midst of situation. But if you cry out to your God, he will answer you. And the God who is omnipotent, omniscient, he will supply all your needs, and he will lead you to the higher grounds and the echelons of God, so that you will not be the tail. I say to you, when you repent, you will get on high, and you will become the towering vessels that I've called you to be. And in my house, says the Lord, you will be the instruments for my glory. And outside of my house, you will be the threshing instrument. And you will see the glory of your God go forth through the land. Therefore, I say to you, do not look to situations and circumstances, but look to me, says the Lord. For I am the one that would accomplish those things. Yield yourselves to me. For it is from me, through me, to me. And you will see the glory of your God. And the anointing of God shall flow. And you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken a word into your ear in this season. Therefore, do not let it drop by wayside. Cultivate this word and manipulate it into your nature, says the Lord. That you might know that I, the Lord, your God, will do great and exceeding and abundantly things in the midst of you. Do not look to situations and the lack. But look to the God who supplies every need. And you will see and you shall laugh at the calamity. And you will stand in the midst of it and you will dance and you will praise. For I will cause a song in the night season. And when the dry is there, says the Lord, I will cause the water to come. And when the lack is there, I will cause growth. And when the need is there, I will meet the need. I am the Lord, your God. Oh, come on. Praise Him. 
Come on and give him praise. Come on and give him praise. Hallelujah. Awesome God. Awesome God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. God, we magnify you. There is none like you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.